is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Good morning, my brothers and sisters. <laughs> I'm Don, and I just want to say thank you, Father, for the day. Thank you, Jesus, for loving us. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for revealing all truth to us. And thank you, Lord God, that we don't have to be offended. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> and that's the opening shot across the bow of the enemy's ship. <laughs> we don't have to be offended. Anyhow, I just ask that this morning that you pray while you're watching this, begin to pray. And ask the Lord to reveal to you what He's trying to say. And uh, <clears throat> this morning I'm going to go into the definition of a son. A human male offspring, especially of human beings. I don't know why they say that. Um, that's coming from the Webster's Dictionary. A male adopted child, a human male descendant. A second person of the Trinity, which is Jesus. A person closely associated with or deriving from a formative agent, such as a nation, school, race, uh, <laughs> from a family. And uh, this morning I'm, I'm going to ask you a question. What does it mean to be a child of the Most High God? What does it mean to be a son or a daughter of the Most High God? Now, since uh, the Bible uses male terms throughout the whole Bible, a lot more than female terms, we're going to be using female, I mean male terms this morning. It's not meant to offend anybody. So if you're offended by the terms I use, go ask the Father to uh, explain it to you. <laughs> and uh, that's as far as I'm going in that. And my first scripture is Proverbs 1, 7 through 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. Hear, my son, your father's instructions, and forsake not your mother's teachings. For they are a graceful garland for your head, and pendants for your neck. My son, if sinners entice you, do not consent. And this morning I'm asking myself, what does it mean to be a son? And, and in my own life, I don't really have an answer for that. So I think that's why the Lord's got me doing this, so I don't have any preconceived notions of what a son is. I know I have an idea what a son is. I have a father, a physical father. I'm a physical father. I know how my son acts. But I was never raised in a household where uh, my dad ever spoke to me like that to not forsake the ways of the, of, of the Lord or the teachings of the Lord. My dad never taught me that. My dad taught me to, <laughs> to survive. You know, we were always in survival mode. And if you're in survival mode, you're living in the flesh, not the spirit. And uh, anyhow, I don't know what it means to be a son. And so that's why I'm speaking this morning. That's why I'm stepping out in faith. That's why I'm being honest and not trying to act like I know something that I don't. And so I, I want you all to pray about what a son is. And, and pray for me. So I'll know what, what it's like to be a real son. I was never close to my dad. And uh, there's been a lot of healing there. And, I have no bitterness towards my father. If he asked me to do something, I'd do it. But is his son a slave? Or is his son a mini version of his father? Or is his son the exact opposite of his father, like the case of Jonathan and, and Saul? Or uh, Solomon and David? Or, or, are they, or are they one, like Jesus and the, his father? He said, the Father is in me, I'm in the Father, and we are one. And a lot of times, we have preconceived ideas of, of, of certain things, and God wants us to not have those things. God wants us to, to, to be clear-headed about these things, and not have any preconceived ideas, because once you begin with a preconceived idea, you build a box around it, and that becomes your gospel, that becomes your truth. That becomes your religious law. And uh, anyhow, 
What is a sun? What what does a sun do? <laughs> so there there's your questions for the day. And uh but I think that if we allow the Holy Spirit to minister this to us, we're going to see. If you begin to read about father and, and child relationships through the Word, father and son, father and daughter, you can apply daughter to the where, where the word son is. So I have no problems with, with using the word son. So at any rate... You women can apply daughters where the son is. Where it says the son, where it says, uh, "Hear my son, go hear my daughter, your father's instructions, and forsake not your mother's teachings, for they are graceful garland for your head and pendants for your neck." My daughter, if sinners entice you, do not consent. See how that works. So, how, what does it mean to be a daughter? What does that look like? And, uh, so anyway, we jump forward several hundred years to <laughs> Paul's teaching. And, uh, we go to Galatians 4, 6, and it says, And because ye are sons, God hath sent forth the Spirit of His sons, in uh, the Spirit of His Son, into your hearts. Let me reread that. And because ye are sons, God hath sent forth the Spirit of His Son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. And we can cry out, Daddy, Daddy. The Spirit of His Son, Jesus. That we, we have Jesus. He's been sent into our hearts. And He will teach us how to be sons and daughters. And I thank you, Holy Spirit, that, that you're giving me a little bit of revelation here, that it isn't just a male-based thing, that it is for both of us that we can say, and because ye are daughters of God, because ye are daughters, God has sent forth the Spirit of His Son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. And then in Galatians 4, 7, it says, Wherefore thou art no more a servant, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. We have to take that identity upon ourselves, that we are children of God. And I'll read it for the women out there. Wherefore thou art no more a servant, but a daughter. And if a daughter, then an heir of God through Christ. God isn't, isn't gender-based. God doesn't love men more than He loves women. There's a feminine side of God too, so we have to keep that thought in mind. That God isn't 100% masculine sitting on a mountaintop or a cloud with a lightning bolt in His hand ready to strike war on anybody who offends Him. <laughs> okay. But still, I get back to the basic question, what is it like to be a child? What is it like to be an heir? And those are the things we need to come before God and humbly ask Him to teach us. I began asking Him to teach me this morning. I know that I have a certain amount of authority that the enemy has to listen to me, that I can speak things into existence, that through faith I can create things that aren't as though they are. And, 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 and that's one of the things about being the Son of the Most High God, is that we can do these things. But in order to know what our authority is, we have to have an identity. And if we have an identity, then we know who we are. And we can relate to that identity. And I know this is kind of a messed up uh, time this morning that we're having in this blog, but... It's a time of exploration, and it's okay. We don't have to have all the answers. We only have to believe that Jesus can give us those answers, that the Holy Spirit can enlighten us, that the Father can speak to our hearts. And we just have to know that whatever questions we have, we can ask those questions without fear of being made fun of, without fear of retribution. 
If I don't ask, I'm not going to know. And somebody said one time, there isn't any stupid questions. <laughs> Some of the answers sound pretty corny and pretty stupid. But I just want want to leave you this thought. Who are you in Christ? I guess that's the whole thing this morning. Who are we in Christ? And, and what's our identity? We can begin to explore that. We don't have to be bound by, by any kind of rules created by somebody else. We can ask those questions and the Lord's more than happy to give us an answer. And I believe through faith that I'm going to grow in this. That this question will grow in me. And by me knowing I'm going to become a better father, I'm going to become a better person. I'm going to be a better son to my parents. And so I just want to say thank you for coming and sitting with me this morning. I just bless your day in the name of Jesus. Have a great day.